This is Volvo's very first dedicated electric only model, the new C40. This is basically a sleeker, sexier version of the XC40 Pure Electric and it's finally here in Malaysia. So let's see what this coupe SUV EV is all about. While other brands are just starting to plan their EV CKD programs for the Malaysian market, Volvo is already doing it. This, in fact, is VCM's second fully electric car to be locally assembled here, specifically in its Shah Alam plant. Volvo is so confident of selling EVs here in Malaysia that it expects by 2025, a short three years from now, three out of every four Volvo sold here in Malaysia will be EVs. Fast forward to 2030, it expects to be a 100% EV only car brand here in Malaysia. A lot of other brands have similar targets for the global market, but Volvo is the only one to have similar targets right here for our specific market. Is that bold, brave or ambitious? Perhaps a combination of all those. But back to the car at hand, this is available in a single variant here in Malaysia. C40 Twin Recharge Ultimate, priced at 289,000 ringgit. That is just 10,000 ringgit more than the more conventionally styled but similarly powered XC40 Electric. This is badge as the twin recharge because it uses two electric motors powering both the front and rear axles for an all-wheel drive setup. This has a rated output of 408 PS and 660 Newton meters of torque. This car, Volvo claims, can go from 0 to 100 in just 4.7 seconds, which is 0.2 seconds quicker than the XC40 electric. Just as important for EVs is the driving range. This car with its sleeker shape is slightly better than its XC40 electric in terms of overall range. This is rated at a maximum of 450 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle. That is slightly more or about 3% more than the XC40 electric. For charging, this has the standard 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger. So going from zero to 100% overnight will take you around seven to eight hours. For DC fast charging, this can take up to 150 kilowatts at the maximum rate. This can go from 0 to 80% in just under 30 minutes. On to styling at the front, this car looks identical to the facelifted XC40 range. The EV specific front grille is now more neatly integrated into the whole face. It no longer has that weird outline of the grille from before. The headlights are from the facelift XC40 range as well. It's more pointy, sharper towards the center. But unfortunately, we are getting the standard LED reflector headlights instead of the more advanced and much better looking LED projectors available in other markets. As for wheels, we are getting the standard 19-inch alloys over here and the tyres are both specific to Volvo and electric cars. One thing you may not know is that despite this being an all-wheel drive car, the front and rear tyres are actually staggered. The rears are slightly wider than the ones in front. At the back here, however, the C40 is all unique. The more slooping roofline is both more aerodynamic and sporty compared to the standard XC40. And the taillights, this is perhaps the most elaborate, the most exciting looking Volvo set of taillights we've seen yet. Slightly more controversial is the use of double spoilers on this car. The top half can look like a Civic Type R or a Lamborghini Urus, depending on how you see it. While the bottom half is slightly simpler, but it does have a small slot in between. What I find interesting is that despite this clearly being marketed as a sportier SUV, it still has the traditional full black body cladding around the entire car. So compared to a sportier style SUV of the same class, this appears much taller, much more rugged in comparison. Inside, the C40 is identical to the XC40 SUV. With that, I mean it's a very nicely appointed cabin, very good build quality for the most part, and I think it's pretty easy to use as well. The center screen runs the very latest Android Automotive OS, and this gives you direct access to Google Maps and even Google Play Store where you can install your favorite apps such as Spotify and so on. For iPhone users, you still have your Apple CarPlay if you want to. This, I think, is a very big improvement over the fiddly to use older Volvo sensor system from before. Although the fact that all the aircon controls are still embedded within the screen is a bit 
of an issue for me. But at least you still have a proper physical volume knob and seat buttons down there. Specific to the C40, this car gets a unique trim that is called topography. This I think looks pretty cool both at the front as well as the front door cards. It's nice to the touch as well. What you will not find anywhere on this car is any form of a start button or a twist to start knob because this has a similar system like Tesla. All you need to do is have the key in your pocket, get in, press the brakes and select drive and you can drive off. Other than that, this car also has what Volvo calls a leather-free interior. The gear knob, even the key fob are all just covered in plain plastic. You won't find any actual real leather on this car. The steering wheel, the center armrest, and even the seats are all covered by synthetic artificial leather. A lot of the plastic bits in this car are also made out of recycled plastics, but from the look of it, everything feels top-notch in terms of quality, so that is not a complaint for me at all. The seats as usual are fantastic, up to the usual high standards from Volvo. They may not look like much, but to sit in, they are fabulous. Another unique thing for the C40 is the standard fitment of a full panoramic sunroof. Now, this does not even have a cover, so it's always open. I'm not sure how that's going to fit our hot Malaysian weather. But on the other hand, this car does get a rocking sound system, a 14-speaker, 600-watt Harman Kardon premium audio system. That's such a nice thing to have. As for the rear seats, the standard XC40 does not have the best rear seats, but the C40 takes it even further in the wrong direction. Because of the sloping roofline, you get even less headroom over here. So I am only 167 centimeters tall, but if I were to sit up straight, my hair is just about grazing the ceiling right here. If you are taller than me, which most of you are, you might not fit in the back here comfortably. Add to that the fact that the rear seats are also placed a little bit too straight up and the base of the seat is just way too short. This is clearly designed for toddlers or kids in child seats rather than adults in the back here. Having said that, I do like the airy feel that the full panoramic glass roof gives to the rear quarters over here. But beyond that, I don't really have much nice things to say in the back here. The topography trim at the front is just replaced by this dotted plastic trim. And despite this being a pure electric car, there is still a big center tunnel in the back here. But on the bright side, this does have a pretty spacious boot as you come to expect from a Volvo. The C40 has a 413 litre load space which is not much smaller than the full SUV XC40. Plus, the fact that this does not have an engine under the hood frees up some space for a pretty large fruit. You can easily fit your charging cables or even a large backpack under the bonnet. So that's the new Volvo C40. It claims to be a lot of things, an SUV, a coupe, and an EV all at the same time. Would you choose this over the XC40 electric? And more on that, what do you think of Volvo's super ambitious targets of selling EVs here in the Malaysian market? Let me know in the comment section below. For now, thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.